Hey film friends, I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Welcome to the channel. Guys, my head hurts. No, really. See, I'm supposed to be an expert about this stuff. It's on the business card. Critic. And I walked out of Megalopolis and I texted my friends, Welp, that's going to require so much thought to write a review. I mean, utopian future cities and decades-long passion projects, a dude who was probably aiming for a tone like screwball comedy era Ernst Lubitsch, yet landed much closer to Shakespeare or Ralph Waldo Emerson or Marcus Aurelius or Thomas More or Sappho the Poet or the true life tale of urban planner Robert Moses? Okay. A fever dream, an art deco fable, what else can we say? Woof. We've got work to do. Stick around and help me, please. This is Francis Ford Coppola's Megalopolis. Welcome to Thunderdome. Here's where the myth starts. It's 1977 and Coppola is on a total heater after two Godfather flicks and the conversation, with Apocalypse Now waiting in the wings. Greatest four-run stretch in movie history. So he thinks to himself, Hey, big brain Francis, I want to make a film drawing parallels between the fall of Rome and the decaying present and future of the United States. But no, we're going to actual history and setting the events of the Catalinarian Conspiracy of 63 BCE in modern New York City. Only it's basically shot in Atlanta with a ton of green screening. You can look it up, but suffice it to say it's an actual Roman coup attempt involving players named Catalina, Cicero, and Caesar. It takes him 15 to 20 years to even get the thing off the ground. Then 9-11 happens and a few of the plot points hit a little too close to home. Shell, more gestation in the brain of the maestro. Fast forward to the tens and maybe we got something going. Then worldwide pandemic. Wait a little longer. And now at last we've got it. Five decades later, a pretty wondrous and at times beautific piece of performance art that somehow is essential to the whole Coppola canon. A story about an ingenious eccentric with the most optimistic vision of the future since Elmo and Mr. Rogers. Did you catch that word? Optimistic? Because this film is so Oh, sincere. Oh, and by the way, the character I mentioned is Caesar Catalina. He's the absolutely stunning Adam Driver in a total powerhouse performance. But don't be fooled. The main character here is really Francis Ford Coppola. He's playing the role of an artist at the end of an empire in a time of transition. Megalopolis wants you to believe it has themes for days. Many men stand on balconies and quote famous Greeks and English playwrights about societal structures and how they fail humanity when they're aimless and unruttered. Everything from economics, the division of wealth, the role of journalism, the voyeurism and sex appeal of pop stars, and the utter greed and consumption of modern America gets sent up here. But running in a cross current against all these ideas is a picture that can be utterly arresting to the eye. I mean, the performances are absurdly theatrical and exaggerated, the dialogue unnatural and showy, but some of it is quite something. The imagery is often ostentatious and in some key moments, downright surrealist. Oh, you mean druggy fever dream like Apocalypse Now. So obviously we're talking about elaborate production design and costuming. There is heavy use of green screens, but it's pretty effective at world building. What I most credit the film for is that it is insanely ambitious. It's wildly original. It swings and swings hard. It is grandiose, indulgent, majestic, pretentious, incoherent. Oh, sorry. We're on the pros. But some of the biggest flexes from the master here are just legitimately breathtaking. We catch this cab ride, for instance, where you see these statues like the scales of justice come to life and slump and melt, almost like Dolly's clocks, like exhaustion has hit the entire city. And we could say plenty about the centerpiece 30 plus minute sequence of a massive wedding party at the Coliseum. Read Madison Square Garden. But whatever you want to make of that drug addled reverie, you've got to say one thing. Only one dude could have made this. And perhaps that is the very best summary of the strengths of Megalopolis overall. Okay, so buckle up. I've got two chief complaints of Megalopolis, and then I'll let that trickle down into some other critiques. The first is the age old debate of style over substance. The second is the discussion of a film that is a tonal mess. And honestly, these two kind of collide and rub shoulders with one another. 
To me, the film felt like maybe 30 minutes of real plot tops. The rest is grandstanding and moralizing and tooting one's own horn. To go back to that druggy wedding scene, there is just so much going on and it keeps on spinning with ADR dialogue and flashes of images and random plot threads. After a while, I couldn't keep up. Then I stopped and I wondered to myself, could the director even do so? I mean, it seemed Coppola himself may have lost the plot in the sea of cinematic excess. I'm not the first to say it, but sometimes the whole view experience here just feels like we're trudging through a series of Coppola's dreams. I mean, the report on set was that the dialogue was a real collaborative effort. Coppola would give a cast member a direction and see where they took the delivery. While this is all well and good, what you end up with is a work where you've got like 12 famous actors in 10 different movies. This is the tonal mess that I'm referring to. I mean, despite being somewhat of a train wreck off camera, it clearly translates to something with juice in the afterburners on screen for Shia LaBeouf. He and Aubrey Plaza are completely hamming it up. I think they're the only ones actually in the screwball comedy Coppola may have once thought that he was making. Driver is stately as the more traditional interior brooding male family figure of Coppola's best films. Lawrence Fishburne is donning his voiceover king cap, and John Voight is going back and forth between all of these other things tonally. It's just really, really hard to keep up. Add to that that things feel edited out or discarded in places, like scenes are missing or the reshoot didn't happen, satellites fall to earth, riots come to the fore and are quelled in moments. This thing is just as overstuffed as this review is becoming. And I should have said in the prose that Coppola is clearly trying to hit cinematic touchstones of the past, like Fritz Lang's Metropolis and The Red Shoes and Chaplin's Modern Times, movies with a distinct cinematic language with real objects and sets and magic. He does get there some, but honestly for me, this film more recalled Southland Tales or Cloud Atlas than anything by Eisenstein. Sorry. But my biggest con, uh-oh, now you guys got him really warmed up, is I think this wants to be a capital I ideas movie, but does it get there? From my perspective, all of the political contract theory stuff is half-digested philosophy. So we're trotting all these ideas out on building a utopian vision, but there's just really no meat on those bones. It ultimately just becomes a lot of famous people in pretty costumes running around in circles looking for a way to say something, anything profound about the state of our American politics and culture and where we're headed. And to me, this thing just ends with a whimper. I'm probably being unfair because in order to have a real work of lasting genius, you've got to be hubristic and bold and out there. Megalopolis does that. Oh, does it ever. Points for trying, but man, did it fall short for me. So, what's the final word on Megalopolis? It's a visually stunning, deeply ambitious work from a legendary director but it's also an overwhelming and uneven experience. Coppola's latest feels more like an art project or manifesto than a traditional film, packed with grand ideas but lacking a coherent narrative. While the imagery dazzles and there are moments of brilliance, the film gets bogged down for me by its own excess. It's not the disaster some claim to me, but it's far from a flawless masterpiece, worth seeing if only to witness Coppola's bold vision. Well, there you have it. The only thing left to discuss is our rating for this picture. FOF gives Megalopolis 2.7 out of 5 stars. If you enjoyed this review, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. And guys, we've got a podcast now. Furman on Film, the podcast. Check us out on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Our first episode is already up, and we've got a brand new one, It's What's Inside, coming later this week. And don't forget to visit FurmanOnFilm.com for even more movie content. I'm Nick Furman. This is Furman on Film. Stay firm, my friends.